Okay, hi everyone. In this video, I just want to kind of go over uh, some of the, the statements that are being made uh, on Facebook. Every time I'm putting up a post saying, woohoo, I've fasted for 24 hours and uh, I'm going to go for another 12 and do 36. People are going, no, Dom, your body's going to go to starvation mode and you're going to explode into fatness and all that kind of stuff. Mm, not entirely sure that that is the case. Uh, I've been checking out some research and got some re great research papers. This one by Hopkins, King and Blundell. Um, great one talking about all the different types of physical activity, um, uh, dieting, uh, the ability on weight loss, compensators, non-compensators, VO2 maxes, how it's all affected by all that kind of stuff. Anyway, what it kind of goes on, I'll, I'll go into this in a minute, but what I'm saying is doing a 36 hour fast your body is not going to go into starvation mode. As long as you're not immobile, you're not morbidly obese, and you're not and you're not dehydrated. That dehydrated one is a bit of an interesting one because that's a lot of the research is on different types of people. So whenever you if any of you are going to take an interest in this and go, why the hell is Dom fasting? What what the hell is good about fasting? Why does he think it's good? research about it first, then take a look at the research articles that have been done. Uh, this this one is kind of like a conclusion of over, uh, I think it was 150, I think the bibliography goes on for. Uh, so it's a bit of a monster. And you've got, there's certain types of research that's done on this kind of stuff. One is done on mice. That's not entirely applicable to humans. The second one is done on uh, clinical cases. So that's usually people who are in hospital or ill. So again, relating that to a healthy individual who is active every day and also doing weights, you can't take a direct relationship to that. And then the third one, which can be with healthy people, is with people that are doing Ramadan. Ramadan being the Muslim Lent, effectively, you know, the Muslim time where you just like don't eat. But what that one is, is that you don't eat during any periods of sunshine. So from sunrise to sunset. And that can be either 12 hours if you live kind of near the equator, or if you're in Norway and it's summertime, that could be maybe one hour of being able to eat. But the other thing is with Ramadan, it's no water as well. And now water is generally a catabolic state. Uh, be, be, being dehydrated is a catabolic state. Being hydrated is a very anabolic state. That's why you're always got to drink water, otherwise your body starts like just dying if it doesn't have it. Humans can live without food for a month, try and give them no water for three days, you're more likely to be dead after that. We're not camels, we can't store water in us like we can energy from food, like fat. So this is how I would say to think about it. Think about the bit which is inside your brain, which controls your hormones, which has your growth hormone, your, your, the, the signals to store fat, save fat, burn fat, uh, grow muscles, um, all, all that kind of stuff. You've got your testosterone, you've got your insulin, you've got your uh, testosterone, growth hormone, insulin, those three things, can't remember. And the part of your brain that controls of that is either like the pituitary gland or the thalamus or the hypothalamus or certain parts of that. Anyway, in there, it's the parts of your brain which are, uh, it, it can't see what you're doing. It doesn't have direct relationships with your consciousness. And it's saying that to, to control that, it, imagine it like a, a blind accountant. He's in your head and if every day you're going to the gym and you're lifting weights, there's also signals going up to your brain from your muscles going, oh, I need to get bigger, I need to lift heavier weights. So your brain's kind of going, oh, I need more muscles. I'll send out some growth hormone. Super, I'll send up some more testosterone to build more muscles so that I don't die. Good. And if you're sending those signals to your brain all the time, your brain evolution will go, muscles, good. So if you fast for a day, for 36 hours, for 48 hours, your brain's not gonna go, oh, get rid of the muscle, cut the muscle, save the fat save the fat, and, and in fact, let's, let's absorb more stuff into our fat. No, that doesn't really happen. The blind accountant in your head will go, oh my God, haven't been, haven't got a, 
instant energy source in my tummy, I must get it from somewhere else. Let's get it from the liver. That's how we get sugar from it and keep the brain going. And then it goes, oh, liver's run out. Let's start sucking it from the fat cells because we need the muscles because we use them every day. However, if you are morbidly obese or if you're just lying unconscious in a bed, yeah, your brain will go, hmm, I don't really need these muscles. I'm not using it. Let's start taking them away. So even within people, there's inter, uh, greater, inter, inter-individual variability. Now this is, is an interesting thing where they're saying that even with people that do diets who under very controlled studies, you've got a 50-50 of people who are compensators or people whose body metabolic systems are compensators or non-compensators. Non-compensators can lose a lot of weight Compensators, their body compensates for, oh my god, I'm not getting enough food, must slow down me metabolism, must re reduce the thermobolic effects inside my body, and they will lose less weight. And in some cases, they're saying, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but like, this is the kind of chart of, yes, these are non compensators, these people, like this person lost 14 kilograms, and 14 kilograms of that was fat. And then it goes up and up and up. And then roughly around about here, they're saying, yeah, these people are, their bodies kind of going, oh, I'm not getting enough calories, let's slow it down. But then there's this freak, freak amount of like, what's it, what's it, that's like the last 10, 15% of people who are like super compensators. And the second their body doesn't get enough food, all of a sudden they go, boom, <laughs> and just get fat. One person, after having a calorie deficit of the equivalent of 40% every day, for uh, for 16 weeks somehow increases body mass by four kilograms and fat mass by four kilograms. You're just like, how? How do you do that? And what they're saying is that the, there, there is a thing called, yeah, adaptive thermogenesis. So that means like their body will kind of, slow down how much it heats up or cools down or all that kind of stuff. So what I would say is, yeah, with some people you may have a great reaction to fasting, with other people you may not. You may even get fatter. However, one of the things that they're saying in this, in diet, uh, in this, is that as you lose weight, your, meta your metabolic rate drops. And they're saying that uh, that's one of the reasons why a lot of people think that they, they, they can't lose weight because once they start losing weight, they're going, yes, they're losing, let's say, it's a kilogram a week. Once they've lost two kilograms, their body compensates for it. And then all of a sudden, they may only lose 500 grams a week. And they're like, oh, what the hell? I've eaten less and exercising more. And then the week after that, maybe only 250 because their body wants to store, wants to save fat. However, with fasting... All you need to do is just not eat for a day. And if you're a little man and your head's kind of going, oh, wait a minute, not got food for a day, ah, oh, take it from the fat. If you're fasting every single day for a month, fair enough. If you're doing it for a day, a week, and the rest of the week you're just eating healthily, then your body's kind of go, great, yeah, just get rid of some of this fat. And every time you have a nice healthy meal afterwards, then it's like, cool, let's do that to make sure our muscles are all full of energy, glycogen, in you go, get bigger, get stronger, get fitter. And they're saying that fasting, uh, they, they had one research article in here, which was very good. Oh, finally found it. Okay, Larson Meyer et al. Et al done a great uh, research study where they did people who did fasting. Um, and, oh, that's another thing to look, whenever you're looking at the research stuff, uh, some of the fasting, So anyway, I've totally rambled on far too much there, camera batteries died, but what I'm just saying here is that fasting does not mean starving. Fasting can actually mean that your body increases its uh, resting metabolic rate because your body's kind of got to go, hold on a minute, what the hell, if you are fit and healthy. If you're fat and useless, no, it may not be that great for you. If you're in hospital, yeah, you may lose more muscle mass. If you're using your muscle mass every day, your body, your inner bits of your brain will go, no, why are we going to get rid of our muscle when we're using that every day? Fat, that's just our stores of energy. That's what fat is. Fat is there to be stored for whenever you don't have instant energy. So it goes, 
instant energy, I'll get it from my fat cells. It's not going to take it from your muscles straight away. If you do drop your weight, what will happen is that your, your body mass drop will go down. You have to do more exercise when you're lighter to keep the weight off once you've lost the weight. So yeah, if you have a crash diet, you suddenly lose a lot of weight, but what happens is that you have to do over double the amount of exercise, I'll, I'll do that in another video, double the amount of exercise once you've lost weight than what you did before you lost weight to stop the regain of weight. A bit confusing, I, I probably didn't make any sense there, but if you want to have a little check, I would say definitely have a little check of this. It's, it's really a great thing to have a look at. Um, and diet-wise, what they're saying is that whether it's low carb, high carb, low fat, high fat, um, low glycemic index, high glycemic index, blah, 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 all the research things brought together, the only statistical difference between any of the uh, diets is the actual number of calories. So they're saying, eat whatever the hell you want, it doesn't really matter, but different diets have different effects on people's uh, satiety, so how satisfied you are, and uh, your effects of hunger. So if you go a low carb diet, you may feel that you're more hungry more of the time, and you may enjoy it less. However, with what I'm doing, fasting, I just kind of need to go, great, not eating for a day, done. Easy, no problem, don't need to think about it. And then all, all I do need to think about is that when I come off the fast, I'm gonna have the nicest, biggest, healthiest meal I can possibly have. So all I need to think about is one meal, instead of every day trying to think of four, five, seven square meals of small little portions throughout the day. I'd much rather just go, right, can't be bought, I'm not doing anything on Friday, right, I'll just not eat, and then I'll wake up on Saturday, and I'll have a really, really healthy meal, and fill my body up, and get my body wanting all the good stuff that I'm going to consume. Not going off the fast and going chocolate, 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 chocolate. Not doing that anymore. It's all about healthiness. And fasting, I think it's goddamn easy. Every religion does it in the world. And it's, it's healthy and it proves better than just chronic calorie deficit and exercise. There you go. Anyway, more in the future.